Following on from the video where we looked at AQA's advice on how to use your calculator in an A-level examination, we're going to look at two questions from the 2018 A-level maths examinations that really highlight where you should be using your calculator extensively to work out the solutions to the question. So this first question here is question three from paper two, again from June 2018. We've got the graph of y equals x cubed and we need to find the total shaded area and it's a multiple choice question. We've got four possible solutions that we can have here. Now we can actually work this out entirely on the calculator. The one thing that you just need to be aware of is because we have essentially a region above the x-axis and a region below the x-axis they have to be integrated separately and then the absolute value of the area that you found added together if we just integrated the region that we had between minus two and zero here we're going to get a negative answer because it's below the x-axis and we know that we want to add the absolute value of that onto the area that we find between naught and four but we can get the calculator to do all of that for us work it out and then give us the answer as it's only one mark there's an expectation for you to use your calculator to be able to do this in fact if we have a look at the mark scheme you can see that you only get marks for circling the correct answer the correct answer being 68 let's just see where that comes from on the fx991ex here well we're going to use the integration feature well this is going to be the area the region that we have between 0 and 4 but let's import our function first so it's x cubed navigate right we need to input our limit so that's 0 and 4 navigate right again so we've got the large cursor here we're going to add the absolute value of the region that we find when we integrate between negative 2 and 0 so we want shift and absolute value and then integration again and we still have the function x cubed so we're going to input x cubed as a function and this time we have the limits of negative 2 and 0 and we've inputted everything here so we can actually just press equals at this point so here we have the area that we wanted 68 alternatively what you could have done here is if you recognize that this second bit is going to produce a negative answer then we could have a negative here minus minus to add the the value of that on if you wanted to or as I've done there you've you're adding the absolute value so that was the thing to be really careful of but essentially is in terms of the calculation you're getting the calculator to do all the work for you the second question that we're going to have a look at is from paper one from the summer 2018 exam series from AQA and this is question 10 we've got a scientist researching the effects of caffeine she models the mass of caffeine in the body using and then we've got a model formula there m0 milligrams is the initial mass of the caffeine in the body and m milligrams is the mass of caffeine in the body after t hours on average it takes 5.7 hours for the mass of caffeine in the body to halve one cup of strong coffee contains 200 milligrams of caffeine and so this is actually split into three parts we're just going to have a look at them separately so part a the scientist drinks two strong cups of coffee at 8 a.m use the model to estimate the mass of caffeine in the scientist's body at midday so before we can actually answer the question what we need to work out is this unknown constant that we have in here the constant k which would represent some sort of rate that we had some sort of rate of decay of the caffeine in the body so we've got enough information from the question to be able to find out what k is and we're going to let the calculator solve that for us okay so what we know is that on average it takes 5.7 hours for the mass of caffeine in the body to halve one cup of strong coffee contains 200 milligrams so if we base it roughly around what this scientist is doing drinking two strong cups of coffee we know that that would contain 400 two times 200 milligrams of caffeine so our mo that we're going to input is going to be 400 and what we're interested in is if we have the time as 5.7 we know that the body will halve the amount of caffeine in 5.7 hours so therefore our m will be 200 half of that 400 and we can input those figures into the calculator as the formula is written so we know after the time of 5.7 hours we're going to have 200 milligrams of caffeine in the body we're then going to set that up with an equals because we're going to solve this so it's alpha and equals 
Then the starting amount was two lots of 200 milligrams, two cups of coffee, that's 400 milligrams as our MO. And then it's E. And then minus, what we're going to have to use is a different letter just to substitute in for K because there isn't a K available on the FX991EX. I'm going to use A instead. So I'm going to press alpha and A and then multiply by 5.7. That's the amount of time it takes to halve. I would introduce a multiply there as well just so the calculator's completely certain about what's going on with that. We know it's minus K which has become minus A multiplied by the time of 5.7. Now all we need to do to find out the value of k there is shift and solve. So shift and solve, we're prompted that we want to solve for a, yes we do. Press equals and here we have our value of a, hence our value of k, 0.1216 to four decimal places and so on. Now that's actually going to be stored in a, so we can use it in a subsequent calculation. It's probably worth, if you're doing this in the, your exam, just writing that down just for confirmation for the examiner. Nice and clear that you found k. But we didn't have to rearrange the equation to do that. We didn't have to introduce logarithms like the natural logarithm to solve it. We can just let the calculator solve it for us. So let's do the second stage of this, which is actually answering the question of estimating how much caffeine is in the scientist's body at midday don't actually know the amount we're looking for that in this time so it's just a straightforward calculation 400 was the starting amount two cups of coffee with 200 milligrams in each e to the power of well it's minus a which is representing our k times by our time well if you started at 8 a.m we want to know about midday the time difference there is four hours four hours from 8 till 12 midday and so therefore it's times by four multiplied by four Press equals, and here we have the result of our calculation. 245.9296. They actually give this to two significant figures in the mark scheme, which we'll just have a look at in a, a second. 250 is a viable answer, or 245.92. Let's have a look at the mark scheme for this first part then. So you can see that provided that you're using the model uh, that we set up in the calculator so it's well worth writing down what we're going to put into the calculator you're going to get the marks and then obtains correct value of k so you just get a mark for k then so there's no marks for doing any rearrangement and introducing logarithms or anything like that you can do that method if you feel it's necessary but you can let the calculator solve it in this case and then the second mark well we've got a method mark there for inputting those figures into the calculation so essentially what we want to do is just write down what we're inputting into the calculator and let the examiner know nice and clearly that this is what we're using and then once again if we get the correct answer from that we don't need to show that we're solving it we let the calculator do the work for us 245.9296 we can see in the brackets here which is what we got as a final answer anything which rounds to 250 will get the mark so they've given it to two significant figures so we can do the same, m equals 250 at midday. Let's have a look at part b of this question. The scientist wants the mass of caffeine in the body to stay below 480 milligrams. Use this model to find the earliest time that she could drink another cup of strong coffee. Give your answer to the nearest minute. Again, we're going to use the calculator to really do all the, the solving and the calculation for us. Let's just have a think about what we're going to input. We know the initial mass of caffeine after two strong cups of coffee is 400, so that's still going to be the same, MO. We know that K is going to be a constant, which we've got stored in A, 0.12 and so on. We don't know the time, that is what we're going to be looking for. What we're interested in is if we know that a cup of coffee adds 200 milligrams. If we know that the scientist wants her amount of caffeine in her body to stay below 480, that means she must have 280 or less in her body so that when she adds 200 from another cup of coffee, it doesn't go above 480. So we can set up an inequality. 400e to the power of minus k, so minus 0.1216. T, which we don't know, we're going to find that out is less than or equal to 280. Okay, we're going to input this into the calculator. Now, we can't input an inequality sign in, but we can use the equals and use that as a critical value and then introduce the inequality back a little bit later. So it's 400e to the power of, 
we've still got our a value which represents our k value stored so it's minus a times well we need another variable to represent t here so i'm going to use x you're free to use whatever letter you choose but i wouldn't use a because we've already got our k value stored in that and then alpha equals and then we want to put 280 we know that is the maximum amount that she can have in a body so that when she adds 200 to it it doesn't go over 480. okay we're going to solve so it's shift and solve now be very careful here because the first option that comes up here is a and we don't want to solve for a we want to keep a as the constant in fact we want to change the variable to x so just navigate down and we can solve for x uh, it's zero for me because i restarted prior to doing this it, you might have another value stored in there but we're going to just press equals that should solve the x for us and here we have our x 2.933 and so on that's going to be stored in as our x which we're going to be using momentarily so what we really know is that t must be either equal to this or greater than this for the amount of caffeine to be 280 or less so t is greater than or equal to 2.933 what we're after is the time after eight o'clock in the morning that the scientist can drink this particular coffee we're just going to use the degrees minutes and seconds button to help us out here uh, so it's eight o'clock eight hours plus and then we want to add on well x we want to add on our time in hours x 2.9 etc so it's x hours equals and here we have the time that is going to be 10 55 and 59 seconds it says give your answer to the nearest minute so it's going to be 10 56 so the answer there is going to be 10 56 so 10 56 or later she's going to be able to drink that coffee we wanted the earliest time to the nearest minute well it's going to be 10 56. let's just have a look at the mark scheme and just check that so we need to use the model set up an inequality or equation so we could use equals remember you should be writing down what you're inputting into the calculator using their k we know that we've got k from part a so there is follow through if you did make a mistake on that but we know that as is the right value and we're using 280 not 480 remember because we're going to be adding another 200 when she drinks that new cup of coffee and then the next mark is solves their inequality or equation to find t so it doesn't necessarily say how as long as you've solved it to find the, this value of t 2.933 and so on they've given an example here typical solution uh, of using the logarithms using the natural logarithm to solve it and you, you're more than welcome to use that way but we use the solver facility provided that we've solved to find t and we've found it that's got as the accuracy mark there the a1 follow through mark and for the last bit there interprets their solution well that was just when we added the amount of time t onto eight o'clock in the morning that's given us a time of 10 56 there we go so that's the earliest time okay finally just for the sake of completeness we're just going to answer part c on there because there is part c of the question this isn't involving the calculator it's stating a reason why the mass of the caffeine remaining in the scientist's body predicted by the model may not be accurate Let's just have a look at some of the reasons that they give in the mark scheme here. State, states are sensible reasons such as different people eliminate caffeine at different rates, so different rates of metabolism, etc. And the model is based on the, an average person. So we don't know if this scientist is average, sort of average height and weight, etc. Uh, the length of time taken to drink two cups of coffee may have been significant. So if she took a long time to drink it, that may have affected the rate at which it was uh, eliminated from her body and also this amount of caffeine in a strong cup of coffee may vary what what is a strong cup of coffee how much caffeine do you have in it that's maybe a little bit subjective so there's certainly plenty of choices there but basically around different people eliminating caffeine at different rates you want to put as your uh, explanation so there we go two questions which are heavily calculator driven on the aqa paper there's many others as well where using your calculator is going to be perfectly fine for getting the answers or the solutions that you need the best advice would be to make sure that you write down on your exam paper what you're inputting into your calculator and the results that you get so it's nice and clear for the examiner to follow through what's happening and what you're actually doing also if the question asks you to show that or fully justify then you need to make sure that you're showing a non-calculator method or method that could be done without a calculator. Your calculator can assist you 
in doing that but you've got to show all the steps so for example if this question had been show all the steps you would need to show that you're solving by rearranging your formula then you're introducing the natural logarithm to find your values etc you need to do that in both cases both parts a and parts b you need to be nice and clear on that and obviously different questions are set up in different ways but anytime you see that justify your answer show that how you got your answer then you're going to have to rely on a method that is non-calculator uh, and show each step of your working just using your calculator to assist you in terms of working things out don't forget to subscribe for future videos but that's it for this video thanks for watching and i will see you next time on the calculator guide